Okay guys, Timmy coming at you today. Today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to explain to you um, electrolytes and their importance in the body. And more specifically, how electrolytes, if there's an imbalance, high or low of a particular electrolyte, how it affects the body. And again, here's a little picture of the distribution of electrolytes throughout the body. So if you look here, red, plasma, blue, interstitial fluid, and then the little, I don't know what color it is, off-white. Um, that's intracellular. So this little diagram shows you that for the most part, sodium is highly concentrated in the blood, potassium is highly concentrated in the cell, magnesium is highly concentrated in the cell, calcium, eh, for right now, we're going to say it's highly concentrated in the blood. Just go with that. All right? So, what I want to do, we've gone over the definition of an electrolyte. And the ones that I'm going to concentrate on and try to explain to you are uh, sodium, potassium, magnesium, and calcium. Those are the ones that you're going to see the most of and the ones that you're going to have to know the best. So. Let me start out with sodium. All right. So here we go. All right. So sodium is found primarily in the blood, or in your book, it'll be the extracellular fluid. And one of the things that sodium determines is this stuff called osmotic pressure. So again, the goal of the body is to maintain homeostasis. So if you look at the little goofy two lines in a circle, two curved lines in a circle, right, you get a cell. And sodium is highly concentrated in the blood. Potassium is highly concentrated in the cell. So, watch. If stuff can't move, or if it remains highly concentrated in the blood of the cell, you have to maintain this stuff, this concept called osmolarity. And osmolarity is defined as the ratio of stuff to water. Right in your book, that thing you never read, okay, that's one. It is the ratio of solute to solvent. The only solvent in your blood, unless you are a heavy duty boozer, should be water. So solute is stuff. Basically anything that ain't water is solute. So it's the stuff that's dissolved in the blood. And we know that sodium is highly concentrated in the blood. And we know that potassium is highly concentrated in the cell. So if we look at the concept of osmolarity, what I'm telling you here is that the osmolarity stuff to water in the blood is equal to stuff to water in the cell. So what you have here is a nice balance. Now, sodium in the blood primarily determines the osmolarity of the blood. And potassium inside the cell primarily determines the osmolarity inside a cell. And again, you want them to be equal. But what's important to remember is that if stuff can't move, stuff can't move. Water can always move. Water can always move. So, let's just look at this for a minute. Let's say, for example, that you say, yeah, I'm not really feeling this class. I think I'm going to go on a horticulture. So you go to a bar, and they feed you a bunch of salty snacks. So what's going to happen to the amount of sodium in the blood? Well, obviously, it's going to go up. So now what you've done 
with the blood by adding sodium to it is you've increased the osmolarity of the blood right you've added more stuff so the osmolarity of the blood goes up and sodium remains highly concentrated in the blood now what you need to do is in your body is you have to maintain this osmolarity so if sodium can't move that means that the osmolarity of the blood there's more stuff to water in the blood and there's less stuff and more water in the cell so if stuff can't move water can always move and water will always move from an area of low osmolarity through a selectively permeable membrane Look what happened there to an area of high osmolarity so water will move from the cell into the blood until the osmolarity of the blood and the cell are equal and that is balance and when water moves through a selectively permeable membrane from an area of low osmolarity to high until the osmolarity of the blood and the cell are equal that movement of water is called osmosis so the only thing that osmosis this is is water so one of the things that sodium does is that it determines sodium determines I wish I could spell osmotic pressure all right so let me explain to you what osmotic pressure is my definition osmotic pressure is the ability of stuff sodium stuff to draw water towards it by osmosis osmotic pressure is the ability of stuff to draw water towards it by osmosis so sodium helps determine the osmotic pressure of the blood and as I explained to you if water goes from the cell into the blood because there's more sodium the osmolarity of the blood has gone up so if you add more sodium to the blood then the osmotic pressure goes up meaning you you because you have more sodium it has the ability to draw more water towards it until you balance out the osmolarity of the blood and the cell so that helps with the idea of osmolarity osmosis and osmotic pressure so when you think of sodium your first thought should be fluid shifts and you learned in general and advanced right and I'm gonna draw a little silly picture of mine so you have the capillary then you have the cell and then you have the interstitial space within the cell now parts of the body almost all parts of the body have these little drains called lymph vessels and you learned that one of the functions of the lymphatic system is to drain excess fluid that has escaped the cardiovascular system and bring it back to the heart so if you think of lymph vessels as kind of like the sewer system of the body any excess fluid that accumulates in the interstitial space is brought back into the cardiovascular system through the lymphatic system and so think of it as like a sewer system the problem is and this is very important the brain 
got no lymphatic system. The central nervous system, really. So, this is important. If there are fluid shifts into the brain, the brain cannot drain that off. And because the brain is fixed inside the skull, any fluid shifts from the blood into the brain will cause the brain to swell. So this is why it's important to understand why sodium helps determine the osmolarity of the blood and how fluid moves. And if you remember the definition of osmosis, then it's pretty clear what you need to worry about. Anytime you deal with sodium, you worry about fluid shifts. And the parts of the body that don't have a lymphatic system to drain that off, that becomes the problem. So the brain really becomes paramount, meaning that's the system that you need to concentrate on if you have an abnormal sodium because it's going to cause fluid shifts. So, and anytime your brain swells, like from reading the textbook, okay, that's two. As the brain swells in low sodium, you're gonna have decreased level of constant, uh, consciousness, right? Your brain activity is going to decrease. Nerves are signaled by muscles, right? And without that, without those nerves signaling because your brain's swelling and ain't working so good, you'll have muscle weakness. And initially, because of the fluid shifts and that compression of the brain, the brain will, you can seize. So when you add fluid to the brain, you're going to compress it. And we know that the medulla oblongata controls breathing. So as that brain begins to be compressed, your breathing is going to become irregular. Also, you can get fluid shifts from the pulmonary capillary into the alveoli, and that can lead to water in the lungs or pulmonary edema. So this is not to be messed with. And usually, usually, what you worry about is when somebody suffered a low sodium level acutely, meaning it happened over a short period of time. What can happen is the body can adjust, make adjustments, if the sodium level decreases over a prolonged period of time. So it's acute loss of sodium that is uh, concerning, all right? So how do you get low sodium? What are some of the causes? Well, watch. Excessive sweating, vomiting, diarrhea, and the fluid replacement is just water. So by adding pure water, you're not adding any electrolytes. So you're essentially doing this. If you are losing electrolytes with diarrhea, sweating, vomiting, then your sodium level is going to go down. Now if you add water, just pure water, if you remember the definition of osmolarity, it's solute over solvent. All right, so if you keep the sodium the same because you haven't replaced it and you increase the water, that will lead to a decrease in osmolarity of the blood, right? So look, look. And again, it's this math thing. Hold up here. Okay. Whoops. Watch. If you win, the, you played the lottery, and the lottery is $10 million. And how much you get, your cut of that lottery, is based on the number of people that win. So do you want that number to be a big number or a little number, like you? So anytime you decrease 
of the denominator in the fraction, it will cause that value to go up. But what did we do? We added water, but we kept the sodium the same, right? So we kept that the same, and we just added pure water. Whoops. So that solvent is going to go up. So you thought you were the only winner, but you found out there were nine other people. So now your cut's going to go down. So anytime you add pure water after a person has suffered diarrhea, vomiting, right, excessive sweating, if you just add pure water, then you increase the solvent, and that dilutes the sodium in the blood. The other thing is, is that simply drinking too much water. A couple of years ago, there was a contest on a radio. I don't know, you could win like a, I think it was the textbook. Yeah. So there are some people out there, I think two people out of a million actually wanted to do it to win the textbook. That's three, by the way. So what they did is they had them drink water and whoever had to pee first lost. So they were drinking nothing but pure water and as a result they were adding solvent water and not increasing the sodium in their blood. The sodium was staying the same. So they were artificially, well not artificially, actually diluting the sodium in the blood and it led to hyponatremia, low sodium, and it caused fluid shifts and the brain to swell. More on that later. All right? Now, there's also a condition called um, syndrome of inappropriate ADH. ADH is a hormone that's released from the posterior pituitary in response to an increase in osmolarity in the blood. And ADH only increases water reabsorption in the kidney. So if you have a condition that causes the pituitary gland to release more ADH than normal, then you are going to simply just reabsorb more water back into the blood from the kidney and the result is you're diluting the sodium. And then this one's nice. Um, beer potomanium. Uh, look, basically what happens is you dilute your blood with beer and because you're diluting your blood with beer, the kidney has diluted urine and how the kidney reabsorbs water is based on the amount of stuff that is in the blood. So if you dilute your blood by drinking beer, then what you're going to do is you're going to cause um, massive release of electrolytes into the urine. You're going to be peeing out your electrolytes. So you will be lowering the amount of sodium in the blood. This one, um, I think I may have experienced um, vicariously. I think I knew some people that did that. I don't do that. I just make videos. That's all I do. Write that down. So those are some of the potential causes. Now, let's, let's look. Watch. What part of your brain our, what part of your body doesn't have a lymphatic system? The brain. So if we look at brain, a brain cell, right? What determines the osmolarity inside a cell? For the most part, it's potassium. Yeah. So if your sodium is low, right? The osmolarity of the blood is now lower than the osmolarity inside a brain cell. So the goal of the body is to maintain that balance. So you have to balance the osmolarity of the blood in the cell. So if sodium can't move, what can move? Water can always move. 
and water always moves from an area of low osmolarity through a selectively permeable membrane to an area of high osmolarity. And as a result of the brain not having a lymphatic system, that brain will swell. Because it's encased inside the skull, this bone is harder than tissue, you should write that down. And what it will do is it will begin to compress the brain and it will cause the blood vessels within that brain tissue to get squished off. Lacking blood flow to the brain is of course bad for you and if it's bad enough, you will die. So again, low sodium, you gotta know it, right? Gotta know it. Now, what do you do for this? Well, first of all, you gotta determine the cause. If it's from drinking beer, stop drinking beer. If they drank too much water, stop drinking water. <coughs> if it's syndrome of inappropriate ADH, then you restrict their fluids, right? If you are peeing out water all the time, that is going to stimulate thirst. So you have to restrict that fluid so that you essentially concentrate that blood, right? You've got low sodium in the blood. If you're reabsorbing all that water back into the blood because you got too much ADH, then you simply have to restrict the fluid. Boom. Now, let's talk about high, high sodium levels, hypernatremia. And again, when you talk sodium, you think fluid shifts right so higher than normal sodium in the blood so what do you got this is what you got you got sodium in the blood potassium in the cell right potassium sodium all right now Again, the goal of the body is to maintain that osmolarity, solute over solvent. So it is clear that there is more water in the blood than in the cell, right? The osmolarity of the blood is higher, high osmolarity, and in the cell it's low osmolarity. So if stuff can't move, water can always move. So where's water going to move in this situation? Please get this right. Good. I got it right, I think. So water is going to be removed from all, 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 all the cells of the body. Because all the cells of the body are exposed to this high sodium level in the blood. And this is just an aside. If water gets sucked out of the cells and goes into the blood, you're going to increase the amount of water in the blood. Right? So you've increased your blood volume. And I'm just going to tell you this. We'll learn about this more later. Anytime you increase your blood volume, you increase your blood pressure. That is why people with high blood pressure are told to have a diet that's low in sodium. Right? That water is going to get sucked out of the cells. It's going to increase your blood volume and therefore your blood pressure. But here's the other thing. Remember that all chemical reactions inside a cell have to occur with water. So what's going to happen is you're going to cause all of that water, or a lot of it, to be sucked out of all the cells. So chemical reactions inside the cells are going to be slowing down. Now, we also learned too that, watch, um, sodium is required to depolarize nerves. So if you got more sodium than normal outside the nerve, it's going to cause more sodium to leak in. So nerves 
at least initially again will get more fiery. Now what are some of the causes? Decreased water intake. So as people get older their sense of thirst decreases so they may be thirsty but they're not doing anything about it. And then the very young, right? A little, you know, six month old baby can't say, yo mom, I'm thirsty, can I have some water? So those are the two groups of people that you have to watch, the very young and the very old. Now, excessive use of osmotic diuretics. Osmotic diuretics deal basically with water. Now, watch, remember, when you talk about osmolarity, it don't make no never mind what the stuff is. It is where the stuff is. So again, you got a cell. Who cares what cell it is right now? And you have the blood. Where's sodium highly concentrated? In the blood. Where's potassium highly concentrated? In the cell. Now, watch. Sometimes doctor will give what are called osmotic diuretics. Osmotic diuretics allow fluid to be lost in the body due to the effects of osmosis. So one of the things that happens, especially in people who have a swollen brain, right? You know, they got hit in the head with the textbook, right? They will give them a sugar called mannitol. Mannitol is not metabolized by the cells of the body. It's a sugar. So because it's not metabolized, it remains in the blood. So what have you done? You have, whoops, you have increased the osmolarity of the blood. How did you increase it? By adding the sugar, mannitol. So in this picture, where is the osmolarity higher? Well, I just told you, it's in the blood. And if stuff can't move, sodium and mannitol can't move, water can always move. So water will come out of the cells. Now, one of the things about the kidney is this mannitol is going to end up in it can be filtered by the glomerulus. And when it's filtered by the glomerulus, what's going to happen is it's going to draw water from the blood into the urine. And that's going to cause more urine to be produced. So that's referred to as an osmotic diuretic. And mannitol, if you overuse it, right, can cause excessive water to be lost in the urine without any electrolytes being lost. So that is going to raise your sodium level because you're getting rid of water. All right. And then water loss associated with extreme sweating. So one of the things that professional athletes do that a lot of us don't is that when they sweat, they just sweat water. You never see Michael Jordan coming back after halftime with a salt ring on his t-shirt. These guys do not need Gatorade. What they need is water. Who needs Gatorade is refrigerator repairman. When he's working on your compressor and he's got his, you know, butt crack showing. And I always wondered how you could not feel air on your butt crack. Like it's not normal to have that hanging out, right? Maybe they just don't care. But guys who are in poor shape, they sweat water and electrolytes. So if you're just sweating water, then you're, again, concentrating the sodium in the blood. And again, severe watery diarrhea, right? Where it is coming out of you like a hose. And you're not replacing it adequately. And then you have diabetes insipidus. Diabetes insipidus is where you have no ADH. 
Syndrome of inappropriate ADH is where you have too much. Diabetes insipidus is where you don't have any. So you're not reabsorbing any water. So you are concentrating the sodium. You are removing the solvent and keeping the sodium the same. You're concentrating it, right? You're drying out your blood. And then Cushing's, more on that later. But Cushing's, one of the things that happens in Cushing's is elevated aldosterone. Aldosterone is a hormone that's released from the adrenal cortex. And very simply, it increases the amount of sodium in the blood. So what are we talking about? High sodium. So in Cushing's disease, one of their problems is excessive release of the hormone aldosterone, which will cause sodium to remain in the blood, and they will actually reabsorb more sodium back into the blood in the kidney, and that will cause elevated levels of sodium. All right. Again, that clinical manifestations. Again, you, you think of fluid shifts. So when hypernatremia, high levels of sodium, water is going to get sucked out of the blood, or sorry, out of the cells into the blood. The brain shrinks. So as the brain is shrinking, nerves become a little more hyperactive, and that can lead to seizures. So again, always think fluid shifts. Now, the treatment for it is the very slow administration of pure water basically to dilute the sodium. And if the person is conscious and they're able to drink and not choke on fluid, then you have them correct it based on their thirst. But too rapid a correction can cause fluid shifts into the brain. So if you rapidly correct hypernatremia and produce a hyponatremia because you corrected it too quick, that can cause massive fluid shifts into the brain. So that's hyper and hyponatremia. And again, the most important thing that you think about when you think of sodium is you think of fluid shifts. And to truly understand this, you need to understand osmotic pressure. osmolarity and osmosis and I know there's a lot of Oz there but look I don't even know what to say so you need to understand osmotic pressure or the ability of stuff to draw water towards it by osmosis osmolarity is a measurement and that is the measurement of solute over solvent and then osmosis deals with the movement of water. And water always moves from an area of low osmolarity through a selectively permeable membrane to an uh, area of high osmolarity. So I, ho I hope that helped. My next little video will be on potassium, high and low potassium.